Namaste, welcome, welcome friends. As we wait for all of our friends and allies to join us, please prepare whatever you need for your practice. I invite you to have available uh, some blocks, a low footstool, be close to some furniture, so perhaps your armchair or your sofa, often helps to find something that can offer you foundation and stability during your practice. So anything that grounds or roots us and gives us stability, stira in our practice, I invite you. So being close to a wall will also help. And then the comfort, sukham, stira, sukham. Sukham is often invited in where we might want to have some a soft, folded blanket to pad underneath our knees, underneath our seat, underneath our head when we are lying down, on your mat. Thinking about what brings you sukham in your practice. Now that could be a folded blanket, or a cushion. Often um, mats cannot be very comfortable, so they can be quite, especially the rubber mats that are quite sticky, they're not very comfortable. So have available whatever adds comfort to your practice as well as stability to your practice. Our practice today is going to the honoring Shiva, Nataraj Asan. So Nataraja, the king of the dance, lord of action, Nataraja, Natha, action, dance, Raja, king, lord. And I'll talk about what that symbolizes for us as we practice. The mantra that we're going to be chanting today is Om Namah Shivaya. Om Namah Shivaya. Om Namah Shivaya. Five beats to that mantra, invoking the blissfulness of the Lord of Conscious Awareness. Om Namah Shivaya, our mudra, this is when twofold mudra in, Abhaya mudra. So I invite you to bring the right hand up, bend into your elbow, all of your fingers together. And perhaps a very soft curve in your palm, your finger. Abhaya mudra, left hand on your heart. Abhaya means fearlessness. finding courage to acknowledge and recognize the things of which we are fearful or afraid and having courage in the face of that. Closing your eyes or softening your gaze. And as you breathe in and out, Notice the rise and fall of your heart space under your left hand. Connect with your intention, your affirmation, your calling, your sankalpa. To connect with your intention, your calling, perhaps this seeking of courage, connecting with playfulness, bring your left hand onto your left knee and cross your right hand across your body and bring your right hand and cup the two palms together. This is the Sankalpa Mudra. Left palm facing up, right hand facing down. And then creating this fold. This is sealing our intention, our calling, our affirmation. Grounding into that affirmation, into that calling. Manifesting it physically. So we hear this calling in our heart 
and then we manifest it in our physical being by bringing our hands together, the hands, the organs of action, of doing, of giving expression to. Repeat silently to yourself your intentions for either this practice or for going forward. And remember our intentions today are connected with our sense of fearlessness, courage. We're invoking Nataraja, the Lord of the Dance, Shiva. This dance of blissfulness. Perhaps we think about how we can approach our challenges, knowing that we may feel fear, but beyond that fear is the attainment of consciousness, of awareness, of understanding, of bliss. Inhale, bring your hands together in Namaskar at the heart. Opening by chanting Om Namah Shivaya three times, call and response, and then Om three times. Inhale to prepare. Om Namah Shivaya. Together. Om Namah Shivaya. Om Namah Shivaya. Together. Om Namah Shivaya. Om Namah Shivaya together. Om Namah Shivaya. Inhale fully. Om. 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 Hands to your eyebrow center. Namaste. Sasrikal. Islam alaikum. Welcome everyone. Welcome to your practice. So our practice today is going to imbue, be imbued with courage and playfulness. So often when we kind of like confront our shadows or those inner negative thoughts that we might have, we often approach them with great seriousness. And we get very committed to having very serious, deep, meaningful conversations. But sometimes approaching our challenges with a sense of looking at the greater picture, knowing that there's a purpose in all, in purpose to confronting our uh, delusions, our challenges, our inner shadows, our demons, if you want to talk about that mythical language that often is rooted at the heart of Vedic stories and myths. That beyond that is playfulness, blissfulness, the joy of being. All of these shackles, these layers, these clothing that we wear in our daily lives, we shed ourselves of these layers in order to return to our true nature, our true nature of playfulness, blissfulness, joy. You may have heard of the saying, Sat Chit Ananda, Sat Chit Ananda. Sat means truth, chit, consciousness, ananda, bliss. Truth leads to consciousness. And being within our consciousness and moving beyond our own conscious awareness leads to bliss, this heavenly, divine bliss. Let's place our fingertips on the earth. Take a moment here. We're going to do some Sufi circles. So begin to sway in circles, starting in motion at the base of your spine and circling all the way along the length of your spine. And placing your fingers on the earth helps to steady you, to give you that foundation, that anchor from which to move. Let's go the other way with our Sufi circles, the circumduction. And then come back to stillness. Bring your hands to your knees here. 
And then inhale, draw your shoulder blades together at the back and open your heart, seated cat cow. Inhaling to open your heart, draw your shoulder blades together, exhaling to round through and draw uh, your chin towards your throat. And again, starting the movement at the base of your spine. Inhaling to open your heart, exhaling to round through your shoulders. And again, coming to stillness. Let's place our left fingertips on the earth. Keep your fingertips high, uh, high today so your palm is covered. And your hand in a biomodra and reach up and over. Now you can keep your fingers reaching up and over, or you can take your right hand to the back of your neck, perhaps cupping your skull at the occipital, and then gazing up towards the sky so that you're open across the heart, your armpit, your elbow is reaching up, or you can reach across, depending on how you feel here. Reach through center again, fingertips high, reach up and over. And then you can bring your left hand to cup your skull at the occipital and turn your gaze up towards the sky. Open your heart, armpit is open, lifting your gaze, lifting your elbow. Let's do that twice more in both directions. So reach up and over. And then if you wish to take hold of your back of your head, then turn your heart and gaze up towards the sky, flowing through center. And as you do this one more time, we're going to be working to, we're, what we're connecting with Ananda Tandava. Ananda Tandava is that classic pose or asana that we often see Shiva represented in. And we'll be including that in our practice today. The Ananda Tantava is a moment of bliss within movement. So it's a moment of bliss that is captured within the movement of dance. Bringing both your hands down to the earth. Inhale to reach. Take your gaze up. Exhale, bring your hands behind your back. Open your heart. Lift your gaze. Inhale to reach up. So we'll do this a few times, inhaling to reach up. So a lot of opening of the heart today. One more time. And then exhale, open your heart, drawing your shoulders together. Now open out the wings of your arms. As you exhale, cross them over and hug yourself, tucking in your chin. Open out and then cross the other way, hugging yourself in. So let's flow here. Inhale to open your wings. Exhale to embrace yourself. Wrap your wings around you. Last one here. And then inhale, open up. This time as we reach overhead, interlace all your fingers, cross your left thumb over your right, release your index, Kali Mudra. Reach up, standing tall here with your upper body as if you were a vessel, strengthened and fortified. Exhale over to the left. Keep reaching through your hands. Inhale to center, over to the right. If it becomes too much, you can always bring your hands and interlace them at the top of your skull and then come into your lateral crescent shape here. Back to center, hands to your heart. Take a moment here. Bring your right hand in a Baya Mudra, left hand on the heart. Take a moment here, reconnect with your intention today. Sat Chitananda, this truth that leads to consciousness, which leads to bliss this flow of life, the rhythm of life. And then I lift, release our hands. 
we're going to come directly onto our knees into child's pose, balasana. Let's come into child's pose, knees together or knees as wide as your mat. Reach your hands forward. And again, let's come up high onto our fingertips. Eyebrow center can be connected with the earth or just slightly lifted. Walk your hands over to the left to come into a lateral stretch here. So you can feel the extension on your right side. Inhale to look up with your gaze. Now lower your palms so they're flat on the earth. So while you're over on the left, hands are cupped, and head is reaching down, and then lower your hands and lift your head. Almost as if you're in um, Sphinx. So you can have your forearms on the earth or your arms lifted. And then let's come back down to the earth, walk through center all the way over to the right. Again, fingertips high, palms cupped. And then lower your hands so they connect fully with the earth. You may lower your forearms and raise your head to gaze ahead. And then lower again, rising up onto your fingertips. Walk through center. Take a moment here. Come onto your elbows. Bring your prayer hands together at the back of your head in Namaskar here. Walk your elbows as far forward as they can go. Release your hands to the earth. Thread your head through. We're going to come into Cobra here. So thread your crown all the way through. Almost like a dog sitting on my head. Maybe pick up their moments. So from child's pose, thread through into Bhujangas and Cobra. Lift your crown, lift your heart. Exhale, lower. Hands can be flat on the earth here for these first two. Exhale, lower. Now for the third one, I'm going to ask you to take your arms slightly wider. Bend into your elbows, come up high on your fingertips. Press into your big toes. Inhale to rise up. Exhale to lower. Let's do this three times now on this side. Fingertips are you're high up on your fingers. Palms are cupped. Rising up. Exhaling to lower down. Bless you to my dog. Exhale to lower. <laughs> Inhale to rise. Last time, back down to the earth. We're going to press into our hands and through our bended knees back into child's pose just for a moment. Inhale to rise up onto all onto your knees and hands. Into cat cow, Madriasana and Bithyasana. You may start here, inhaling to lift your tailbone, lift your heart space, lift your gaze. Exhaling to round through. Three cycles here of Madriasana and Bithyasana cat cow. And then coming to stillness, take a moment here and then lift your feet off the earth. So bend deeply into your knees here and lift your feet off the earth. Take a moment here. Come onto your forearms. Take a moment here. Lower them. Lift them up again. Now, if you want to move into melting heart, you can move into melting heart. And again, we'll maintain this movement of our feet rising and falling. Extend your arms forward. Bring your heart down towards the earth, your eyebrows center down towards the earth. You can have one arm extended, one arm folded. You can place a cushion or a foldy blanket underneath your eyebrow center. 
And again here, lift your toes and bring them back down to the earth. You will begin to feel this in the back of your calves. One more here. Release your feet to the earth. Slide your hands back towards you. Come into child's pose. Balasana. Take a moment. Take your arms alongside your body, palms face up. So you can release the shoulders. Inhale. Let's come back onto all fours. This time, let's lift the left toes up towards the sky. Bring the right knee in towards the heart, left knee in towards the heart, sorry. So lift the toes and then bring them in towards the heart on the exhale. Inhale to lift. And perhaps each time you reach a little bit higher with your toes, you bring your knee even closer to your nose. Do it five times on one side and five times on the other. Come to stillness. So what we're doing here, so repeat this on the right side. We're beginning to prepare our body for movement. Thinking about the gracefulness of the movement of the dance. There are five actions that are represented by Shiva. Shiva, the deity of uh, consciousness, of creation. So this dance of bliss, of Ananda Tandava, can be a creative, blissful dance. When you've done five on the right side, let's bring our knee back to the earth. Take a moment here. Tuck your toes. Inhale, lift your tailbone. Coming into Parvatasana Mountain Pose. Pedal your feet. Sway your hips here. Have your index finger pointing forward. All of your other fingers are splayed open like a fan. Tailbone reaching high, you might keep a deep bend in your knees. Your heels can be heading towards the earth. You might choose to place a folded blanket underneath your heels. When you come into stillness, coming into stillness, take a moment here. Deep breath here. And while you're here, I'm going to ask you now, to walk your hands slightly back towards you so that your heels connect with the earth. Take your feet as wide as your mat, hands as wide as your mat. Come up on high onto your fingertips, wide, functional, fold. Shift the weight back into your heels, into your back body here. So your hips and pelvis feel heavy and your weight is reaching back. You can bring your hands onto foot, stool, onto a chair, onto your sofa here. Have a soft bend in your knees so that your knees are not locked out. So the hands can be raised higher than the earth and choosing to rest them on your own foundation that you have available to you. One breath here, walk your hands even closer to you. Heel toe your feet a little bit closer and then soften here in forward fold. Your hands can wrap around and embrace at the back of your legs or your ankles. Perhaps you cup your heels, cup your calves, wrap your arms all the way around the back of your legs. This embrace here in a forward fold. Anchor into your feet. Feel strengthened and fortified here. Courage to dance in this blissful way. Often this dance of blissfulness is a way for us to shatter illusions, veils, 
the places in which we might delude ourselves, the places in which others may delude us. This is almost a dance of shedding away. But in that we start off from an embrace, embracing ourselves, embracing all aspects of ourselves. Release your hands, bending into your knees, unfurl your spine one vertebrae at a time, as if you're unfurling a flower head to rise up, coming into standing. And then I invite you to quarter turn here. Shift the weight into your left foot. Before you do that, let's ground down actually through all our feet, really find our foundations. So lift your toes and place them down on the earth one by one by spreading them wide. And then connect through the four corners of your feet. So really feel the connection from your little toe, toe side to the outer edge of that foot, the heel on the, the outer side, on both feet. And now connect with the big toe side, the ball of the foot, the inner arch and the heel on the inside so that you feel this full connection between your feet and the earth by the connection and then you can bend into your knees sometimes that really helps us to sink into our foundation and then lift yourself out bend into your right hand and then turn your left hand fingers pointing down so you might have your hand pointing all the way down you might have a little angle to it you might have a little arch to your fingers. So if you can see, just like you have a curve in your abaya, you have it in this hand. This is called our um, Gajahasta, Gajahasta Mudra. Lift your right heel. Cross your right foot over. Stay on the ball of your foot. If you want to balance, you can always rest your hand on a wall near you. And here I invite you to bend into your knees. Breathing here. So this moment here in stillness, a moment in movement. So if you can imagine that I may have been dancing and I've been captured in this moment, this is the moment in which my true essence is shining. This is my moment of bliss. that this essence is present within us at all times. We may often not be aware of it. Now let's swap our hands. So right fingers reaching down, left fingers reaching up. And then let's swap our feet. So let's take our right foot behind us and come onto the ball of our left foot. Again, bend into our knees. So all we do here is we're going to swing our right leg behind us bring the sole of our foot into the earth and come up onto the ball of our left foot here. And again, bend into your knees, turn that left knee out. So it's a mirror image. Now, hug in the midline here. So here, balance is going to be challenged. The more you bend into your knees, the harder you can feel the action through our legs the more connected we are through our legs. So when we talk about Shiva and five actions being represented here, some of those actions are present through the legs, some of those actions are present through the arms and hands. I can't remember which way I had it. Release here, and then step across your mat with your right hand. Open out your arms coming into Taras and star pose. So I'm moving quite slowly here today because this is not a sequence that we're familiar with. Open out your arms. Toes pointing forward. Tadasana, star pose. Bend into your knees, bend into your arms. Inhale to rise up. Exhale to bend into everything, bending into your elbows, bending into your knees. Inhale to rise up. Arms can be out parallel or reaching up towards the sky. Yogi's choice. Exhale, bend. Inhale to rise. Exhale, 
And let's move with some pace here, dynamic movements, inhaling through your nose, exhaling, ujjayi breath. Ujjayi breath is that constricted breath at the back of the throat in which you make a sound. One more time. Now let's stay down here, knees bent in Utkata, Konasana, Vivyasana. Fold your arms to embrace yourself. Open, cross arm over the arms the other way. Perhaps you bring your head in here. Your legs are going to be feeling this. So the five actions of Shiva as you flow through here is creation, preservation, um, constructive destruction. I'll explain that in a little more detail. Illusion and revelation. So these are the five actions that uh, Shiva represents through this Ananda Tandava. One more time here, open out your arms wide, straighten through your legs so you can release them. Bring your hands together, cross the left thumb of the right, release your index fingers, reach up and over. Standing tall like a vessel here. Exhale over to the left. Inhale, center. Exhale to the right. Inhale, center. Reach behind you, interlace your fingers again, left thumb over right thumb, index finger, or just interlace your fingers, or you can release the index. Draw your hands down towards the earth, shoulder blades come together, open your heart, lift your gaze, prasarita padottanasana. Bend into your knees as you hinge forward from your hips, crown reaching down, hands reaching up behind you, or you can take hold of opposite elbows or you can have your hands loosely clasped. Yogi's choice. Allow your head to hang heavy here, releasing the weight down towards the earth. Exhale, release your hands with care. Bring your hands down onto the earth or onto blocks or your low foot still here. We're going to come into this wide, functional forward fold. So reach forward with your hands so that you can come up onto your fingertips or bring your hands closer to you or further away. Rest them on blocks or on the sofa, whatever brings the earth up to you. Toes reaching forward. Shift all of the weight to the back of your heels, to the help hips and pelvis so that your fingers are just lightly resting on the earth here or your foundation. Soften through the length of your spine. As you inhale and exhale, take the breath to the back body here. And as you exhale, release the breath through the feet. Inhale, draw the breath in through the crown, the top of your head, and draw it along the length of your spine to your root, the tailbone. Exhale, release the breath through your feet, your legs and your feet. One more breath. And then bend into your knees, turn your toes out. Inhale, come back up. In goddess pose, Utkata, Panasana, right hand in a fire, left hand in uh, Gaja Hasta Mutra. This is the mudra that you will often see Shiva in. Take a moment here. Straighten through your left leg, turn the heel out. Reach across with your right hand, reach behind with your left arm, coming into Mahavira Bhadrasan, the great warrior. Inhaling into Shanti warrior, great warrior. So let's flow backwards and forwards like this, 
You can wrap that left hand behind your back or you can bring it to your left leg. Three times here. And then come back to center, turn the right toes forward. Tarasana, star pose. Inhale to reach up. Interlace your fingers, come into your Kali Mudra here, gaze up. Open out your arms, turn the left foot to the bottom end of your mattress, bend into that left knee. We're going to come into Mahavira Bhadrasan here. Again, flowing between Shanti, Virabhadrasan, and Mahavirabhadrasan. So, peaceful warrior and the great warrior. And then coming back to Mahavirabhadrasan, reach that left toes round so they face the long edge of the mat. Reach up and over in your Kali Mutra. Exhale, hands to your heart. Take a moment here, bend into your knees. And this time, let's bring the left hand into a baya, right hand into Gajahasta. Full breath here. Straighten through. Reach up. Exhale, turn the right toes to the top of the mat. We're going to move into um, pyramid here. So hop that left foot slightly out towards this length, the long side of your mat. The wider you take your feet here, the more stable your pyramid will be. Purvatanasana. Your hands can be resting on blocks or on something that's within reach. Fingertips on the earth, or you can even bring your hands to rest on your legs here. Crown reaching forward, tailbone reaching back. Take a moment here. And then let's bend into this right knee and pivot on the left foot. So we're going to rise here into pyramid and then to low lunge and pyramid. So you'll notice that I pivot on the ball of my foot. And then as I rise up, I straighten through my right leg. I dorsiflex my right foot, bring the sole of my left foot to the earth. So I'm almost rocking backwards and forwards here from pyramid into low lunge. Three times in this direction. And then let's pivot on that right foot all the way over to the left. Again, come into your comfortable pyramid stance. Hands can be on your legs or on the earth or on blocks. Crown reaching forward, tailbone reaching back. And now we're going to lower into low lunge by pivoting onto the ball of that right foot. Then lift the left toes up. Exhale to lower. Inhale to rise. Exhaling to lower into low lunge. So your hands could be resting on a wall here if you don't have a bit of furniture handy. And then let's pivot again along the long edge of the mat, left toes pointing to the long edge of the mat, back to center, Functional forward rolls, forward fold, sorry, take your hands wide, come up onto your fingertips. Perhaps you're resting on something. Soften through your knees, shift the weight into the heel, but stay connected through the balls of your feet as well and your toes. But all of the weight is in my back body here. Inhale through your, your crown, exhale down the length of your legs into the earth. Inhaling, let's heel toe back to center. And rise up, coming into a less wide star pose. Exhale, hands to your heart. From here, I'm going to invite you to 
move into some forms of natrajasana. So when we practice yoga, we usually have natrajasana. So what I'm going to ask you to do is come back into your orthodox in your standing mountain. So remember, feet hip distance wide. Curl up your toes, spread out your toes, place them on the earth one by one, and then feel the connection between the earth and all four corners of your feet. The little toe side and the heel, the big toe side, you know, arches and the heel. So you feel really connected here. Then let's shift the weight. If you want to be near a wall for balance, I invite you to come into, go close to a wall. Shift the weight into your left leg and bend into your right foot. So you'll remember we were here before. And then extend your leg forward, flexing your foot, dorsiflex here. So your heel is pointing down, your toes are pointing up. So remember you could be holding onto a wall here. And then let's flex into that knee. And let's move like this a few times. So the heel goes back towards our sit bones and then we point our toes, flex our toes up towards the sky. And then let's release that right foot to the earth. Let's do the same on the left side. So rebalance, recenter, reroute. And the reason we're pointing with our feet is some of these five actions are connected. One of those is connected to the feet. So the angle of the feet. And it's called anu, anugraha. Anugraha means um, revelation with grace. Let's move this a few times. So in Shiva's right hand, he said to hold the drum, the mura. That's shristi, it means creation. He's also said to hold fire. He's got four arms. And fire is samhara, constructive destruction of all that no longer serves us. His third eye, represents preservation, susness, the seeing eye, stiti. Let's come back to center, release that foot to the earth. And now we're gonna to begin to move into this variation of Natrajasana. So left hand can be on heart, right hand in a Bhaya Mudra, or you can use one hand or the other for the wall. So if you want to use, use your left hand, because we're gonna work on the right side here. So left hand and heart, right hand in Abhaya Mudra. Bend into your right knee. As you inhale, begin to reach forward with your crown. And then flip your palm and reach forward with your palm. So keep that right knee bent for the moment or hold onto a wall. So that's where we're just going to start here. Now you could be in different places here. You can have your toes on the earth and reaching forward with your right hand. You can have your right heel up towards your right sit bone and reaching forward. So we're in different places here. Play around with this. Come in and out of this a few times on the right side. This left hand can stay on the heart or you can rest it on a wall, or if you wish, you can bring it onto your um, hips for balance, if that helps you. And now we're gonna bring this left hand into play, if you wish. Right hand in a buyer. Bend into the right knee, bring the right heel towards your sit bone. And as you begin to reach forward with your right hand, Reach back with your left hand and take hold of your right foot. Flip the right palm so it faces up. So left hand on right foot, right hand reaching back. Take a moment 
And then let's come back to center. Now we're going to swap the arms around, but we're going to keep the feet with the right foot again. Yeah. So this time, let's bring the left hand into a bio, right hand on the hard off balance. Bend into your right knee. Let's reach forward with the left hand, flip your palm, and then reach back towards your right foot. And remember, you can have that right toes on the earth and simply reach back with the wing of that right arm. Or you can keep your left hand on your heart and be holding your right foot. Lots of variations for you to explore here. And then come back to center. Let's switch over to the left side now. Again, recenter. Reground through your feet, find your foundation. So where there is movement, we often need to return to a point of stillness. And the stillness will really be supported by our foundation with the earth. So let's have the left hand in a baya, the right hand on your heart. Bend into that left knee. So take a moment there and begin to reach forward with your left hand, flipping that right left palm. And then back to center, back to Abaya. And let's practice this a few times. Perhaps each time you reach forward a little bit more. See what it feels like when you also bend into your right knee. I think one more time. And there is no judgment here. So one of the illusions, one of the veils, the tirubhava, is this sense that of judgment we apply to ourselves and we apply to others. That is an illusion that is constructed by us to separate back to center. So this time, we're going to have the option of reaching back with our right hand towards our left foot as we move forward with the right hand. So reaching forward with your left hand and perhaps reaching back with your right hand to your left foot. Maybe you bend into your right knee and see how that feels. Find something to gaze on. And you might fall in and out of this. Have a wall close by for support so you can reach out. Stira, Sukham, the fundamental basis of all asana. Steady comfortable, steady seat of comfort. And anugraha, anugraha, this reaching for the foot. This is where it's said to be a revelation. So one foot that's connected with the earth is said to be the, um, the destruction of ignorance, of illusions. This reaching for the foot is revelation with grace. And when you've played around with this, let's come back. And this time we're going to swap arms so that our left hand is in our heart and our left hand reaches back for our left foot. So remember, we can be here. Left hand acts like a wind. We can stay on our left toes. We can reach back. So find a variation of Natarajasan that works for you. Right hand is a buyer and then reaches forward, flipping your palm up towards the sky. Play around here. So these five actions, Panchakritaya, Panchakritaya, Shristi, creation, 
represented by the drum of creation, that primordial vibration sound of the universe, the instance at which the Big Bang is said to have taken place. Stiti, stititi, stihiti, sorry. It's preservation, seeing, an awareness of what is. Samhara, destruction, symbolized by fire, the big fire that surrounds uh, Shiva, but also the fire that he holds in his hand. Tirubhava, concealment. This is the arm of concealment. The cloak often said to be the shield so that which we hide, that which we do not reveal even to ourselves or to others. Tirubhava. And then Anugraha is the grace, opening our mind and seeing things from a different point of view. Coming back here now from your play back into stillness, let's all turn around and face the long edge of our mat. And we're going to come into the Ananda Tantava, Tandava. And this is often said to be the Bujang, I have to say this correctly, Bujang Rasita, Bujang, Bujang Rat, Rasita, Bujang Ratsita, Bujang Ratsita, Bujang Ratsita, um, Karana. So this is often said to be the pose that we're most familiar with. So let's ground down into our feet, have them slightly wide. Lift the corners, lift the toes, ground down through all corners of the feet. Take a moment here. And then bend into the left leg. Really bend into that left leg, peel that right leg off the earth. And then let's bring that right foot at an angle. So bend into your right knee, flex your foot so foot is flexed. Spread your toes out wide of your right foot. So under our left foot, we are crushing illusion, veils, and all of the repetitive habitual belief patterns and systems we might have. The right foot is the revelation, so the lifting up of knowledge. Let's bring your right hand and fingers pointing down. So almost as if you're embracing, bending into your elbow. Your left hand into a baya mudra here. So here we have concealment, dirubhava. We have a baya facing our demons, our inner shadows with courage, with fearlessness, crushing them underfoot. But we're also reaching for grace as we do that, for revelation that is um, compassionate. And in Shiva's other pair of arms, in one hand he holds the drum, the other hand he holds the fire, the fire for destruction, destroying, clearing the drum for creation. So clearing with one hand and creating with the other hand. And then let's release your leg to the earth. So you will see that often in yoga, yogasana, in the asanas for yoga, that there are stories behind each of these asanas that we move into or create. Let's come back to center, reground, and then let's lift up the left foot and flex, bend at the knee, flex at the ankle, spread your toes out wide, sink into your right knee slightly. This time, let's use the left arm for our concealment, our dirubhava, dirubhava, a right hand in a baya. And again, you can open out your arms. One hand for the, let's do the left hand for the drum, the damura, damura, and the right hand for agni, fire. And then let's release here. So you'll feel there's still lots of physical engagement. Take a moment. Let's shimmy, shimmy, shimmy. 
shake it all out. And here you have your opportunity to dance. Maybe you bring your arms in, wrapping them around, bending into your knees. Maybe you do some waves here, some spinal waves. Starting at the tailbone, knees bent, hands placed on your thighs. Whatever you need here, shake it all out. Take a wide reach overhead, interlace your fingers, cross your left thumb over your right, bring your hands down towards the heart, come down towards the earth. Perhaps you're balancing the balls of your feet here or come down to the earth in any way that feels comfortable for you. And then release your hands to the earth. Release your legs long here. I'm going to come to the earth in Shavasana just for a moment. So reaching forward, lowering down to the earth. And for your arms, I invite you to bring them to your eyebrow, your hands to your eyebrow center in the sky. Palms together. Let's take a moment here and honor the joy, the playfulness, the blissfulness that is your true nature. That is the essence of you. That we can overcome our barriers, our challenges, obstacles, by approaching it with grace, compassion, and joyfulness of being, joyfulness at life, the creativity of life. Connect and reconnect with your son, Kalpa. Bring your hands to your heart, left hand first, then right hand on top. Your affirmation, your intention to move with courage, to be playful, to reach towards bliss that is beyond separation, beyond the physical world. And then let's take your arms alongside your body, palms face up. And soften here in Shavasana. Creation, destruction and all things in movement, all things in between. By anchoring through the physical movement of the body. We can clear away, burn away all that casts a shadow, a veil, a delusion. I want to read to you a quote by Aldous Huxley, the science fiction writer, who was a great believer in Shiva and was inspired by Shiva. He said in 1961, the great world of all embracing material world with its flames within this Shiva dance, he's everywhere in the universe. This is his dance, the manifestation of the world called his Leela, his play. His sense of rain upon the just and the unjust, and he is not beyond. It is, an all, it is all an immense manifestation of play, this cosmic play, this dance of the stars, Shiva's locks, his wild locks, said to represent the river of Ganga, the stars and moon are contained in it. All of the cosmos, all of the universe is said to be contained within his flowing locks. Shiva connects both to poetry and science. This dynamic interplay of energy that removes clears, that creates and sustains. 
that creates illusion but also reveals itself through grace. One more breath here. Into us. And then begin to curl and uncurl your fingers and toes. Circling your wrists and ankles. Hug in your knees. And then rise up to your Sukhasana. Tira Sukham. Sukhasan. Bring your right hand into Abhaya Mudra. Your left hand onto your heart. We we'll close our practice by chanting Om Namah Shivaya three times. And then Om Shanti. Inhale to prepare. Om Namah Shivaya. Om Namah Shivaya. Om Namah Shivaya. Om Shanti. 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 Danyavad. 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 Thank you, Yogi, for joining me today. If you're on YouTube, please like and subscribe.